All right, so pretty much all we've been hearing and talking about lately is how Yu-Gi-Oh is in a terrible spot. I made a video talking about it. There are like 500 comments on that video. I'm so thankful that you guys took the time out of your day to engage with me. And I'm so excited that we're talking about some of these issues and illuminating them. So what I wanted to do today, I think it's only fitting, is we're going to be talking about top five ways Konami could actually improve Yu-Gi-Oh. Because I think I speak for everybody when I say we just want this game to thrive. And there are ideas out there that people have that could potentially make this game much much better because I don't know what's happening but it seems as though this game desperately needs saving. So like the video if you enjoy it and let's hop straight into it. So the number one thing I want to focus on today is how criminally underutilized the ban list is. Mainly I want to focus on emergency ban list because when a card proves to be too problematic or when a format just gets completely broken because of a certain archetype or engine or floodgate or whatever what they could do is just drop a ban list, address those issues, and move on. It is literally their game. They can do whatever they want. If they feel like something is an issue, and we know emergency ban lists have been a problem solver in the past, why don't they just drop it? address those issues. And this is completely a rhetorical question. I know why they don't drop it. They only care about product and the sales and the money that they can get out of us, the player base. So I understand why they are not utilized, but it would be great to have more emergency ban lists. Another thing is a ban list that actually addresses cards that are toxic objectively. And I'm mainly talking about floodgates and overall types of lingering effects that completely tip the scales and just the balance of the game overall, like Shifter, for example, and also Omni Negates. They did a good job with Savage and Baron. Why didn't they ban Appalooza? Again, rhetorical question. Rarity Collection reprint is the answer. I want to see a ban list that actually addresses cards that are problematic just by existing and don't really promote healthy gameplay. Cards like Calamity, the Synchro one, of course. Harpy's Fetter Storm. Sanctifier. Because low-key, we all know Sanctifier is the actual issue, not Gimmick Puppet, but I don't want to get into that too deep. I just think that the ban list should be utilized much, much more. So let's get into the next topic of today's video. And I really want to know what you guys think about this. But in my opinion, I think they should 100% stop printing engines. <sighs> Look, why is it okay for Fiendsmith to drop and just give Dex the ability to either make Beatrice or Wave Hiking Caesar to utilize Ascent from deck or play around Nibiru when those decks are strong already? I think engines overall are a gigantic issue because what ends up happening with those engines is that they get abused to either protect you from hand traps or have you, you know, get access to a combo piece. And there is again no back and forth, no engagement with your opponent whatsoever because yeah, they can draw those hand traps, but they're not going to be able to utilize them or they're going to be forced to utilize them in a situation that's going to be lose-lose for them anyway, because you do all of that before you even go into your one card combo. They do the exact same thing every single time. They print a broken card or multiple cards, put a huge price tag on them, make you pay for it, and then they hit it eventually because it's toxic overall. You know, on a side note, since we talked about hitting really, really broken cards before, why is Beatrice still legal? I guess with that, let's talk about the third point on my list today, which is I have some ideas for unique price support. And I really want to know you guys' thoughts because I'm sure you're gonna be able to come up with some really, really good ideas. But what they could do is, number one, they could have a type of tournament pack, just like it's uh, happening in One Piece, where they have alternate artworks of cards that you can pull from a tournament pack. Over here, what they could do is they could utilize staples. We have all of these hand traps and board breakers and extra deck staples, and there is a lot of cards that you can give alternate artworks to and actually give them out to players in top cut they are going to be worth a lot because they're good and they're actually useful in the meta so you can sell them and have some kind of profit for it they used to have uh, the starlight rare sheets 
in side events. Now, I don't know what's happening with that, but I'm pretty sure they started printing like smaller sheets or just abolished them overall because players were beefing because of the fact that that price support was much better than in the main event. Another thing is custom giant cards. I think I saw this on Twitter. Someone um, suggested this, but I thought it was such a great idea. Just have the player like in uh, top four or the winner or whatever, pick a card that they want a giant card out of. I think that's actually amazing. Now, number four is personally really important to me, which is I wanted them to actually acknowledge alternate formats for what they are. None of that time wizard bullshit. I don't want that. I think just time wizard. It's just so cringe. Like have events for Edison, for Goat, for Tango Plant, for Hat, for Toss, for Full Power Tier. Like people genuinely enjoyed formats in the past. Why don't you acknowledge alternate formats? I know at YCSS you get these ultimate time wizard tournaments, but have more of those. Like have a YCS specifically for Edison. I think that would be incredible. Give more reprints for old formats. We just got a substitute reprint, but we've been wanting this for years now. And I think they just, they're always late. They don't really seem to care as much. So all I'm trying to say is give more love to old formats. So before we hop into the last topic of today's video, I have two honorable mentions. The first one is going to be, I want them to release more official product. We just got the announcement that you're only going to be able to play official Konami products at the WCQ and the Oceanics, I think as well. They might also implement this at YCSS since it's all like big events. Sure, okay, we can play with your, with your products, but you don't really give us good products. So what you're forced to do is you either play the sleeves that you got from Nationals, for example, or you are forced to, you know, turn to OCG and order their stuff because it's still official Konami product, but it's going to take a long time for you to get that. It might not be as cheap. I think if they want to force us to play with their product, we should get more product. So that's the first thing. And the other thing is that's going to be controversial. Why don't we just play a best of one? No siding, just like a master duel. Let me know what you think about that. But mainly why I think that would be great is because in our side decks are the toxic cards we discussed before, like shifter, like floodgates and all of that. And also what could happen is if you only play best of one, you're going to be forced to play cards like back row removal and other things in your main deck because you don't really know what you're going to be facing and you need to have those outs. So you're going to fill up the spot that you would otherwise have for multiple play sets of hand traps or for your own engines. So you're going to have to be forced to lose some consistency to play cards that are going to win you that duel in case you face someone with a lot of back row or whatever. So I think it would be an interesting option to explore. So yes, let me know what you think about that. But let's hop into the last topic of today's video, which is going to be, of course, the overall price of the game. So there are a couple solutions we could do. Mainly I want to talk about two, but it's a lot more complex than that. I just don't want this video to be like half an hour. So let me know your thoughts and we can go back and forth in the comments. But the main two things I want to talk about is I think they could print alternate artworks in core sets. That would actually be amazing. Just like in One Piece, they have multiple artworks and also multiple rarities. We could see all of that. So either we get, you know, alternate arts or in a basic core set where you have like a hundred cards, maybe you could actually give a slot that's a secret rare like an SP. You could give a super rare slot to a super rare SP as well. And then everyone that wants to have a high rarity card, they can get it, but they can also play an accessible version and actually do well in the game because a lot of times you are forced to pick up those staples in order to do well. I think it would bring the price of the game down significantly. And the other thing I want to talk about is just overall adopting the OCG rarity system. They are doing some of these things where they have multiple rarities and different types of product, but I think we could have their rarities. In my opinion, if it's able to be done in the OCG, it could be done over here as well. They just don't have the incentive to do it because in the OCG, they also have to compete with all of these card games. However, with everything that's been going on lately with One Piece and Lorcana and just overall magic and Pokemon still existing, I think they're going to have to start thinking about implementing some of these things in the TCG as well, because they're going to be forced to compete with those card games very, very soon. Let me know your thoughts about that. And that's actually going to end today's video. I think there's a lot more we could discuss, more than just five things to solve the game. So please chime in with your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and just overall my discussion type videos that I've been doing lately, of course, give it a like as well. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.